What is up, Space Cadets? My name is Mike, and this is our very special episode of Let's Play Solaris, the 1.1 Clark update, with already some very noticeable improvements. Most of, uh, or rather most notably, so far to me anyway, is the ability to upgrade fleets nearly instantaneously. And actually, speaking of which, we have another upgrade available, which was... Basic combat roles. Okay, so let's see what our ship designer is talking about. They're putting the aggressive, so fire rate and weapons damage. I'm actually going to switch it to defensive, which hopefully will stack well with our other evasion. So combat computers are going to give us 10. Thrusters will give us 10. That's these guys. And then our admiral gives us 15. Now it's, it's 10 base and then 15. Okay, we'll just upgrade our, our fleets and just see what happens. Let's go upgrade. Unpause. Upgraded. Construction. Instant, almost instantly, which is so lovely, so lovely. Observation is 24. Okay, so it's 10, 10. Those are base values. And then the percentage is a percentage on top of that. So they do separate percentages uh, apart from the base. So 10, 10, that'd be 20 plus 20. Right. But aren't we getting a 5%? Maybe my math is shit. Flagellating movement. We're supposed to get another 5% here. Oh, right, of course, because this guy's 15. Boki is giving us a 15% plus 5%. That's 20%. So those don't stack. They just add up cumulatively on top of the base value. Base value. I get it. I get it. Okay, cool. So the second colony ship in orbit around Zaplo, the Tortordia, the Tortilla. So the Tortilla is going to go make a very tasty burrito. Colonize planet here. Okay, and again, we're struck with where to put it. Mm, I'm going to again go with long term. So long term, we're going to drop right here. We're not going to get any instant food. Well, it doesn't matter. The bonus one food here would be nice. No, you know what? Because we'll just go there. We're just going to go there and see what happens. It's a smaller planet. It's only a 13 size. With obviously much more limited resources. It says resources 3 here. Well, that's if we build a mining station. So we're going to take advantage of that anyway once we build a mine or what have you right here. So and that's perfectly okay. We are done our... What was that? Surface construction queue. Okay. So what did we clear? We cleared this guy. Right. So in preparation of this guy, once he's hatched, then the next guy that hatches will go into uh, physics research, which will help us out with... Uh, overall, it's going to help us out mostly with our lasers, which is our weapon of choice. So I am happy about that. So the question now is, what is the next step? So we're going to colonize this guy. Everything else seems to be out of range. I suppose we can go over here and start building. We could go over here and start building, but many of these, these are all just two, two, two. So it's going to take one energy each to gain two. Not a great return. Um, this over here, I could get three energy from, from this planet. And when you build an energy mining station, it doesn't cost anything. So it's not a net two. It actually nets three energy. Um, at least the last time I played, that's how it worked. So I'll assume I haven't changed that. So I could do that, or I could build some wormhole stations in preparation of taking their shit instead, or at least preparing myself if they decide to get uppity. Equivalent across the board. Your misguided government is an embarrassment to your proud race. Mm, well, I think genetically my government is programmed into my proud race, so... I don't know if you've got that one right. Oh, this is good. Nine minerals over here. Three, two, two, two. But it's so far away. And look, there's another huge gap of space, which means your puny starting borders from when you are colonizing planets are going to take goddamn forever. So even if I was able to colonize one of these guys, the border is going to take forever to um, stretch out there. So that actually might, though, although that might be a prime candidate for... A frontier outpost maybe we build our first frontier outpost here would that be worthwhile 
because they take influence and they take minerals. So 85 minerals to build, nine minerals back per month. If Well, I guess we're going to have to then build all the mining stations. So the, the cost of getting this up and running is going to be pretty significant. But it's nine total, seven, eight, nine. That'd be 13 total. Six, seven, eight. Mm, six, seven, eight, nine. Another nine total here, six total. It's tough. What do we need? What's going to be our focus? Because these ones are going to be more balanced when it comes to research. So we could snap up all the research. That might be nice. Let's just unpause well and let, let everything do its thing while I decide what I want to do. You know what? I think I'm going to go for the minerals. Maybe it's not going to be the most diverse choice, but you do need minerals. The one downside of these mining stations is, of course, um, you you don't get any real you get your, your racial bonuses to mining collection or to mineral collection. However, you can't upgrade them in the future. So your surface planetary spots are going to be eventually much more powerful than these um, are around the planet. So these are good little early boosts for a small investment. But overall, your planetary ones will far, far surpass whatever the planetary ones are going to get you or rather whatever the uh, mining stations are going to get you. So it is something to take into consideration if we want to invest too heavily, 464, into the mining stations right off the bat or not. Okay, is there anything else in my range? It is not. This guy just, oh, he just colonized a secondary planet. I see where he's going with that. I see where he's going with that. Okay, so while we're waiting, why don't you go research that first? Zip over to there. Yes, zip over to there. Rigu. Should complete quickly. Or no, it's not a speed upgrade. It is an anomaly risk upgrade. However, you're you're already level four, which is great. So we're already getting a flat 8% bonus to this. To our, well, does research speed affect these ones? That I don't know. It probably affects these anomalies, I would imagine. But it probably does not affect survey speed. I think there's a separate trait for survey speed. And then, of course, the other thing I'm going to do is just build more ships. No, you know what? I think what I'm going to do is we will take advantage, considering we have the discount. I think we would be fools not to take advantage of the discount. Fools, I say. As foolish as an insect can be. And I actually don't know what the upkeep costs. Ah, oh, that's another thing to consider. I think it actually takes uh, uh, one of your influence points to to upkeep them as well. I guess we'll find out. I don't know. I don't remember. And I don't know if they've changed it. So not necessarily a matter of I don't remember, but it's a matter of relearning what they've changed. So we're colonizing. It's going to give us two food on our, on our landing spot. Ethics Divergent plus 10%. So the planet is giving us a 10% Ethics Divergent. Is that just all planets in general give us a 10%? Or does this planet have something on it that gives us 10%? What about, let's check our other planet. This one doesn't have it. Huh. Ha ha ha. Brinus 5 frequently experiences massive and extremely violent storm system in his atmosphere. Several dozen persistent storms are visible from orbit, with winds reaching speeds of excess of 700 uh, meters per second. The causes of these storms are not immediately apparent, as we have found nothing in the planet's climate model that would explain them. Our scientists are interested in studying this anomaly, which means it simply upgrades that planet to have a three physics research. Good, not great, but good. So why don't we hop over here? Um, this one has precursor alien civilization technology or something on it. Maybe it's a town, maybe it's a ship. We're going to go find out. Colony established. And the colony is done. Oh, and that modifier went away. Did it? No, it still says planet modifier plus net plus ten percent ethics divergence. Reassembled. Oh, it's just because of the ship shelter. Is that what it is? My dumbass. Yeah, okay, I'm an idiot. Sorry, guys. I was looking at the wrong thing. So that's exactly what it is. So the ship shelter, apparently they don't like that. They don't like having the ship shelter. If we upgrade it, uh, oh, we still need five population before we can do that. That would probably remove that. So I guess living in tents uh, doesn't 
really play to keeping their spirits high when it comes to towing the party line. So I kind of get that. I'd be pissed off too if I was sent to a foreign planet to chill in their jungles in tents. Although I imagine insects might just burrow underground. So maybe because they're missing their, I don't know, their bath salts and their incense candles as they bathe in the underground rivers of Brynus and Avior. Or as we call them in our own um, alien parlance, Idil Saddam and Utum Jaborm. Which rolls off the tongue. Rolls off the tongue. Part of the problem I find, and this is, and I, I don't want to complain too much, but part of the problem, like Garoth the Empire, that's not so bad. Some of the empires and species that I've seen look like a fucking cat just walked across the keyboard, and it keeps, it, it makes keeping some of these guys straight um, very, very, very difficult. So I don't always know what the hell's going on when it just seems like it's a random string of consonant and vowels. I know I'm not the first or last one to complain about that, but just putting it out there. So we recovered artifacts from Neshmet 5. Um, apparently the Voltam Star, Voltam, Voltam, Voltam Star Assembly, the Vulcan Star Assembly, were worm-like annelids. Worm-like annelids, okay, three to four meters in length. Well, that's kind of disgusting, but probably no more gross than what we are. I don't know what that did, except now we have a chance of randomly collecting Vulcan artifacts. Well, I guess we'll see if we can actually find any of these things. I find it a little tricky to, to find sometimes. And this guy, is this guy in our space now? No, he's still not in our space. Still not in our space, still not so lucky. I can find it sometimes a little bit tricky to find those things, especially if they end up landing in, um, landing in enemy territory. Then you may just never complete some of those um, objective lines. It would be nice if it was... Um, Maybe it is. Maybe it is random. I don't know if it randomizes when you uncover that, if it randomizes certain um, specific spots around the map, or if every time you research something, at that point, it randomizes whether or not it's an artifact. That I do not know. Okay, we're going to start building some of these mining outposts since we're spending the resources to do this. And it did indeed reduce our influence by one every month just to maintain that. So we increased our border. Perhaps foolishly, okay, let's see, we're going to get nine energy, at, or rather nine minerals at a cost of four energy. So I don't know if that's absolutely the best possible trade-off. Maybe that was a, a boneheaded move, but there's no taking it back now. We're going to get our minerals and we're going to really focus on perhaps upgrading our fleet. And by upgrading, of course, I mean expanding. We'll build a couple more of those, get bad boys. Oh, and you motherfuckers, get out of here. Oh no, that's me. Oh, it's you, you space cows. Delicious space burgers on the way. For a second, I almost freaked the fuck out and blew up my own ship. This is just the tan, the turtenol, the turtenol. All right, so we're building. You guys are uh, well fed. Okay, let's see. Swirling shadows. Immense ragged planes of shadow drift across Anas's Six's face. On, across Ass's fa ass face's face. They are not cast by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere. Hinged, or rather jointed, to allow for a small degree of articulation. Hmm, that's cool. So that gives us a plus six research bonus to something that is... Again, not in our space. Oh, fuck off. God damn it. I don't care then. This one's going to be a 12%. Let's go for the 2% one first. Okay, you're done with that. You know what? Just continue to... Oh, fuck. Spaceport. Do I cancel? Do you get everything back? Let's see. 140... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, you do get everything back, so... Mining station first, and then we'll come back to the ship. That's good. There's no penalty for canceling when you make a stupid, uh, a stupid mistake. Really benefits guys like me who, for most of my playthroughs, I'm winning as a result of sheer dumb luck and my stupid mistakes being easily correctable by the game, as opposed to any particular strategy or cunning. So I think after we're done developing this system, once we're done mining this out, let's go build another wormhole 
over on Eviore, which will at least give us jump range over here. And then perhaps we will build a secondary wormhole over here on Brinus. And that'll give us more jump range, plus it gives us the ability to zip between our systems even faster. So we found a gilded cage. The mineral construct is, for lack of a better, ter better term, a room made out of the same type of materials common for use, in common use in the mother rack, no, blah, blah, blah. Icocido decahedron. What the goddamn fuck? Is that what this is? Icocido decahedron. Well, I definitely did not learn that in, um, in elementary school in my geometry classes. That is for sure. Anyway, what do we get? Voidcraft trait. What does that do? Pause for a second. So I get 10% on Voidcraft. That is good. And I got some experience, which almost puts me at level 5, almost at the cap, at age 61. So that actually is fantastic because am I researching any Voidcraft right now? I am. I am researching Voidcraft. So maybe we do a little swaparoo here. So you've leveled up significantly. And now you're gonna get the 10% of this, which makes it more valuable for now. And then I will assign you, and you can gain some easy experience out here in the wild. However, now our anomaly risk is through the roof, so maybe that doesn't really make much sense. No, you know what we're gonna do? It's not gonna give up hope yet. Let's take our ships over here. We're gonna go over here and chill. You're gonna bounce back to Zaplo. In anticipation, we're going to clear out this system here with our military first. And then you can come up behind and survey this for some easy experience. You've got plenty of time to build up your experience. We're not worried about you dying on us just yet. The Turtonol is done. Um, okay, we'll do the next one. These are going to take quite some time to pay off, honestly. So 90 minerals to to buy two minerals yield that's 45 months yeah for you almost four years to pay off well long term I suppose I just hope they don't get blown up all right so we have our 212 fleet this is gonna be our maiden voyage our maiden battle um, to see how we perform with all the upgrades we've made so far with double deflectors so this is the battle screen, this is the same. Oh no, don't lose one, don't lose one, don't lose one, don't lose one. I think we're gonna lose one no matter what, shit. Those shields certainly didn't hold out for that long. They seem to be able to take one shot before the shields go down. However, the hull strength seems to be okay. Uh, oh, and they're immediately engaging. Shit, shit. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to maybe repair. Do I want to retreat? No, I'm going to take more damage. Whatever. Fuck it. In for a penny, in for a pound. So we've already lost one of our Corvettes. Luckily, these things are missiles. Are we evading those? No, we're not. Of course we are not, because missiles cannot be evaded. They have 100% accuracy. So our evasion is worth shit all. So it's just, it's just hammering off our shields and our hull right now. Luckily, those missiles seem to be doing jack shit damage. Small nuclear missiles is doing 10 damage a shot. Okay, so actually, you know what? You guys made the right choice. Good job, Boki. I was going to be a pussy and bail out there. You made the right choice. Let's go home and repair. And then, the Desiree, now being flown by Umak, is going to survey. And then the Turtonol is going to build the last mining station in what may have been a very wasteful investment. But we give no fucks because it will pay off in the long term. What I should consider doing then, yeah, because like paying the upkeep plus 90 minerals to develop, would it have made more sense to build, for example, to develop one of these into a basic mine? Because this costs us 25 and produces one. So the equivalent of if it was 50 to yeah but these ones can be perpetually upgraded and it doesn't look like they take an energy to maintain maybe the 
later ones take oh they repair so fast now too maybe the later ones take energy to maintain i don't know they repair so fast and they upgrade so fast i love that that's gonna make um maintaining your fleets a lot easier birth of space piracy well you guys are super late to the party but i'm glad you showed up so the doom pact has shown up terrorists are spreading chaos and fear along our civilian shipping lanes pirates we don't need that scum I agree wholeheartedly. Where are they going to show up? I've got my fleet ready, repaired, upgraded. Where are you at, dog? Where are you at? I don't see them. Evading hostile hmm. fleet. Oh, hostile pirate fleet. No, no. Oh, oh they're going to evade automatically. You fuckers. Okay. Um, can I just click right on you. Let's see if they're smart enough to bounce around intelligently to chase these guys. Oh god, no, if you blow up one of my things, I'm going to be really pissed off. Okay, we'll, um, mountain range. We'll put that on hold for a minute. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh, you fuckers. So the Brackman Frontier Outpost is taking a beating. Luckily, there's only three of them, so we outnumber them two to one. Well, this thing, is this thing fighting back? It is. It is shooting something back at them. But again, it's a laser doing very little damage, but at least it's something. And now, oh, the battle didn't update. Let's click on you. There we go. Are we going to lose anything? I hope not. Not to these scumbags. And, oh, just barely. Left with six hull points. <laughs> barely, barely, barely. Um, so that's very, very lucky. Promising officer. Captain Bogu, the commanding officer of the Brackma Frontier, served with distinction during the recent engagement that took place in the Brackma system. The Admiralty on Zapla, recognizing the qualities of a promising flag officer, has decided to promote the captain to the full rank of Admiral. I thought Bogu was already Situation a updated. Admiral that we had access to. Is it a different Bogu? Um, Bogu, let's see. Ship upkeep and evasion. You're twice as good and you start at level two. Oh, hang on. There you go. Okay. So Bogu System is now system. the new flight leader. Sorry to Boki, your this guy's younger, so it's not the same guy. And there's new guys here. Are any of these guys good? Evasion plus five, evasion plus ten, evasion plus fifteen. Nope. We still have the best of all worlds, I believe. Space Amoeba, where are you? Do I want to attack you? Or are you just gonna be chill? You gonna be chill? You're going to be chill. All right. Appreciate it. All right. So Desiree, what the, what are you doing? All right. So after all that, that turned out to be pointless. Okay. Let's pause a second. We've got some stuff queuing up. So society research, what are we going to work on next? Okay. So we have access to dense jungle. What is this? That's a space in We're not worried about that just yet. Dense jungle, I think is going to be the wisest choice. At least certainly out of these. We don't have many volcanoes to remove. One volcano, many dense jungles? Yes, many. So that would be the wisest choice, I believe. Not that we, I mean, we've got some growing space. Oh no, you son of a bitch. You son of a fucking bitch. This guy just colonized. So they apparently like arid worlds. It's a small guy. But that's going to put some pressure on my border. How dare you? How dare you? Now we're going to get border friction. May of 23. You know what? If you're going to be an asshole, we might as well gain the 1.8 influence in return. We might as well just gain it. That'll offset this. And I see how this is going to play out. I see how this is going to play out. You don't need crystal ball to see how it's going to, how it's going to play out. You are going to need regular balls in order to um, enact that strategy, but we know how it's going to play. Okay, you, the Turtonal, what do we want you to do next? What do we want you to do next? We are going to get you to build a wormhole station out here. I feel like if you build the wormhole stations kind of in the middle of nowhere, um, it will prevent enemy fleets from hopping like because they hop in through these little green arrows it will prevent them from 
um, hopping on top of your wormholes and instantly destroying them. So if you're out here, I hope they just tend to leave them alone a little bit longer. All right, in physics, sorry, didn't forget about you, physics, pardon me. Um, we're still good. We sort up some of our physics, so they'll pay off quickly. So what is next? What is next? What is next? Survey speed? No. Industry, do we want Batherian power plants? It's Batherian power plant two, and we need Batherian power plant one first. I don't think you can build straight to two. So a big no to you right now. However, this one's going to take fucking 40 months. Uh, three and a bit years. Three and a bit years. We're 15 years past discovering faster than light. But I feel like the shields are probably going to be very useful very quickly. So let's just go for it. Let's just roll on it. Science ship, what are you working on? Absolutely nothing because you can't. There is nothing for you to survey anywhere. Until a construction ship builds this, and then you'll have a job. So why don't you come over here and chill for the time being? It's probably the best strategy. And since... Hmm, now what do we want to do? Since we don't need... Maybe we should build a couple more. I almost just want something to... Just to dissuade them, like a preventative fleet. If we build our fleet up far enough to at least get... Either, either keep them equivalent, or even better yet, somehow pull ahead of them... That would be best. Because if we can pull just a slight bit ahead of them, they may be less inclined. A recent decision has been made to prioritize indiscriminate massacre and dispose of all Gar Garothi. Oh, that's me. That's me doing it to them. That makes sense. I was going to say, that's kind of odd for them to all of a sudden announce to us that they're going to be committing mass self-genocide. But we're deciding to eliminate them, which I am cool with. Now I'm in an energy de deficit. I think that's because of the new ships that we built. Also because of some of the upgrades that we have built as well. So it might be in our best interest to grab a couple of quick... I say a couple, but there's really only one. We'll grab the quick energy upgrade here, which will at least keep us in a net positive for now. Construction complete. Spaceport has constructed its queue. That's good. So now we've got a fleet of 242. Where does that leave us? Still equivalent? We're going to have to do a lot better than that, apparently. And I just want to make sure these guys are using... Yeah, they're all using the defensive chips. It will be interesting to see what kind of weapons they use. Because if they're using missiles, I'm probably going to end up having to switch to offensive. Because the evasion bonus will do us no good. Do us no good. And at that point, I'd rather just lay down some heavy firepower and burn the shit out of them. Alright, so science ship. Do I want to explore with my science ship or do I want to explore with my fleet? I'll explore with my science ship. We're going to move at first, mostly because I don't want to undock the fleet and suffer the energy loss. So the much higher energy loss now. So we're going to move at first, which means with the evasion on... No, we're going to set it to passive. Because if they encounter aliens, she's going to jump back to Brynis and then lose her shit and lose her order. So we don't want that. We don't want her to lose her shit. She's got to keep her shit in order. But we will make sure that she bounces back and forth very quickly to explore all this. And as long as she doesn't warp in on top of an alien, she will be perfectly safe. Fingers crossed, famous last words. Okay. So then last thing we're going to build with the construction ship before taking a break is over here. Another wormhole station, which will give us a little bit more forward offensive power and mobility. And now we are finally starving for, or suffering from starvation rather on Zaplo, um, which means I think I miscalculated how the food works. Not surprised. Well, I'm going to figure that one out. I'm going to take a break here. Thanks so much, guys. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you all in the next one of another very special episode of Let's Play Solaris.